the first time I looked at Forge World and I was like, oh, hey, cool, that's, oh, holy, you guys did what? There's just way too much. You can't keep it all in your head at once. It was so beyond our production capability. We were just like, you know, that's crazy. We can't do that. I couldn't stop the artist who started creating it. Forge is our editing tool that players can build their own maps. I mean, at its core, it's a map editor. We always had this vision right from the get-go, which is anyone can build anything. Giving the fans the tools, they can take it and run with it and make it their own. Forge World actually started as five separate maps. And I said, wouldn't it be cool if like, you could play this and go over there and then play over there if you wanted? And Forge World was born. There were a lot of people telling us that, no, you cannot ship this as one big map. We have this awesome new automatically generated LOD system called impostering that make, makes objects that are really far away really cheap to draw. We're pushing what we can do with the Forge budget, so that lets us have many more objects up on the screen at once, which lets us put more objects into Forge. Interesting to take the Banshee or Falcon out for a spin in Forge World, because it actually takes a while to get from one end to the other. The second you come into the space, you should know that you're on Halo. Our old friend, the Forerunners, come back because the Forerunners create all sorts of cool, interesting pieces of geometry. Uh, we wanted to give people a variety of locations that they could forge in a different way. So a gulch, an island, an interior, a very small outdoor pocket, and then the rock, which was kind of uh, based off a of sentient. Let's use a lot of interesting parts in it so that people can manipulate it or we can change it. Why don't we bring back blood gulch and carve it all up into pieces so that people can, can start manipulating it in interesting ways. And then Sanctuary was the other one. The cage in Paradiso, well, that's just Chad and I playing with a map editor and actually building cool maps within Forge World. I mean, we were doing that exactly how the fans would do that. We definitely looked at what we did in Halo 3 and said, what can we learn from this? It's one thing to build just a stunning amount of map variants, but like nobody was expecting Forge Art, I don't think. Like that was just a completely, whoa, <laughs> what? The Rube Goldberg machines, yeah, those are everywhere. In Halo 3, it was cool that you could move things around, but it was still kind of clunky. And we're like, we have to make this better. What are some of the tricks that the community is using? And how can we make those not be tricks and just make those be tools? We, we took that stuff and made it like a real feature. There's normal, phased, and fixed. So normal is like Halo 3 style. You know, it bumps into stuff and you let it go and it falls to the ground and moves around and stuff. And fixed is the same thing, except when you let it go, it stays exactly where it was. And then phased is the coolest because it means that while you're editing the object, it's not actually interacting with the environment. You can put it through a wall, you can put it you know, through other objects. Which changed everything for Forge, like immediately. It's much easier to build a Forge space. There's snaps and rotates and, and degrees and, and units that you can move things. You can be very precise. The camera controls, it's actually really good for object placement because like little touches on the stick don't translate into really sudden jumpy movements. And then we also have a, a fine editing mode. You click the stick in and then your camera starts moving very slowly. You're not spending like three hours trying to get one block to line up directly to three other blocks. You can select individual objects and say, get rid of all the objects of this type. So if you're trying to get rid of all the spawn points on a map because you want to go and replace all the spawn points, you can do that. You can do custom colors. You can take these forge pieces and say, hey, that's blue. So the blue base can truly look like the blue base. Reach's expanded sandbox includes new things like, you know, jetpacks. And if people want to build some sort of 3D map and really, really make use of the jetpack, they can do that now. Custom game options and forge go together like peanut butter and jelly. You're able to do things with game types that people might not even expect. My favorite example is King of the Hill, where the warthog is the hill. I'm super excited to see what people do with it when it goes out, because there's so much crazy stuff in there that's amazing. We are shipping maps on the disc that we made in Forge ourselves. So 
the tools are there. If you have the time and the talent, you can make it. The community is just gonna outstrip us and spank us. With the new tagging system, you can save a Forge variant, you can post it to your file share, and then you can say, you know, sweet new map. Things that are good are downloaded by a lot of people and passed around to a lot of people, and that makes the really sweet stuff bubble up to the top. I'm looking forward to what the next big community game type is going to be. We realized that Reach was our swan song to Halo, and what better way to do that than to, to let people do what we've been doing all along, which is creating new cool maps. It's nice to go out with a bang, and uh, this is this is a pretty big one.